Eric Mwade here. Today what I want to do is I want to take a look at the bankruptcy for Kodak and some of the things we can learn from the chart because it seemed like the market was aware that things were not right with this market for many many years. So company filed bankruptcy January 2012. If you take a look at the monthly chart you'll see that 2012 January is right about there. But you can also see that before that, the stock had really taken a big drop, dropping there, dropping there again. It broke this trend here. It broke down there. And also see that five years ago, this is a five-year monthly. The stock was trading in the 16s, in the mid-teens, and it kept dropping. But by the time it goes bankruptcy, it wasn't trading in the $16 area. It was trading under a dollar, actually at 60 cents. And that's the story on a five-year monthly chart. But I want to spend some time on the long-term monthly chart for Eastman Kodak because there's a lot of information here that we can use on our day-to-day -day trading. So we're going to go back to the stocks chart going back to the late 1980s and as you can see in the 80s the stock was doing very well this is one of the reasons why you always want to be buying stocks that are breaking out as you can see for many years ever since the IPO here in about 89 the stock had shown potential by breaking out multiple levels here breaking out to new highs breaking out pushing higher so it, it had a nice run but now something curious happens here in the late 90s it drops on the monthly chart after making this all-time high for about $75 it would come and try and take out that high in 1998 mid 1998 there but it failed and that failure you know on hindsight but if you are watching the technicals that failure to take out this previous monthly closing high was a red flag of sorts Needless to say, if you take a look at the chart, the stock would trade in this general area. Nothing wrong with that. It made a low here in late 97 of about $45 and soon bounced to, to this attempt here to break out and failed. Now, what is important here, it came here, bounced off this for a couple of months, moved higher, could not move above the moving averages. And that's the story also. If you take a look at this chart, you'll see that the stock had trouble for many years, and I'm sidetracking here. Take a look at how the trend lines were pointing lower for many years, going back to 2000. The 10-month 10, 10 moving average and the 21-month moving average pretty much were trading lower. So that's a red flag. But here, the stock fails to take out the moving averages. But what was an absolute red flag is this break here this line here once it broke down there which meant that this support here had failed that was a serious red flag okay now this happened in the middle of the tech bubble bust so stocks were breaking down so really you know you'd think that if it bounced it would bounce with the rest of the market but this stock never bounced ever since the late 2000s while the Nasdaq had a nice run between 2003 and 2007, so did the Dow, so did the S&P 500. The stock never had a major bounce, and that's another red flag. When the market recovered to new highs on the S&P 500 between 2003 to 2007, 07, this stock didn't re recapture any move to new highs. So here's another stock that was underperforming, and you always want to avoid underperforming stocks. Now, most investors have a habit of looking for underperforming stocks, underperforming sectors, and that's not a good idea because that is where you have the weak sectors, the weak stocks for a reason. They are weak. The market knows something. So let's go back to the technical. So after this major break here, the stock came and formed bear flag because it tried to move high in this channel here but subsequently failed it moved below that channel and the channel is shown by the gray line let me show it to you another way so there's a channel here 
and you see the stock would come and break that channel and once it broke that channel that was a cue that the stock was in trouble so it breaks there now it, this break you once something breaks a major trend draw a straight line and you see that down the road years down the road it tried to take out that high and failed hope that makes sense so the stock would come here broke down out of that trend which is this break draw a straight line you see it failed to take out that high there another red flag but since we're just learning here is noticed the stock found many other red flags in terms of the bearish flags there was another trend here to move higher that subsequently failed there draw a straight line notice this break point was tested here it failed tested here for many months failed and failed that's another red flag all right notice now that we make this multi multi-year lows here and hold we seem to be holding here for many years let me draw that another way so this general area here seem to be holding the stock together but come 2008 when the market was in trouble this stock which was already weak of course is going to break down it breaks down to new lows it never saw those prices again twenty dollars after breaking that low it never saw those prices it would come and settle here for a month or two formed another low and broke down again there I would call it about $18. It never saw those levels again. Another break here at about, let's call it $14. Another break to new lows there. It never saw those price levels again. So the market was telegraphing that this was a stock in trouble. And sometimes some of these things are very simple when you just understand that if a stock, ha if a stock has been trying to hold a base like it was trying to hold here, once it breaks down, you have no business being in the stock you have no business trying to buy the stock the market is telling you something very profound let's take a look at the rsi here on a monthly time frame and i want to point out some things here very obvious there was a break of this trend line here in 98 so that break there corresponds to the all-time highs there so draw a straight line and this is the black line I draw here so so the break point gives you a line on the sand so this area now gave you so once we broke down there you draw a straight line notice that we've stalled on multiple monthly levels here we would fail here in fact we had a double top here on the monthly RSI so even given the RSI on a monthly level the RSI was telling you that this stock was not in good favor now there's another way you can do this from a generic understanding of how the RSI works and I'm gonna show it to you let's take a look at it and find a nice color here when stocks are trading above 50 on the monthly which is this general area the market tends to favor the stock now notice when things change around and the stock generally starts trading below 50 it's very generic but it tells you where the direction is going you can see above 50 here we had a nice bull market as far as Eastman Kodak was concerned and when it generally started trading below 50 on the monthly RSI which is this area you can see how the stock really went almost to zero practically to zero and those are the things you have to understand where is your stock trading on the monthly chart where has it been trading on the monthly chart over the last couple of months over the last couple of years what you want if you want to really be in the good side and in favor with the market you want your stocks to be trading above 50 and you want to avoid stocks that are trading below 50 especially if they're going to be trading below 50 over a period of many many months many many years that shows you a stock that is out of favor with the market okay so let's take it to another level here we had another break of the RSI trend line here so once it broke down there you draw another straight line very simple that becomes an area to watch notice this area was never breached again to the upside in fact it gave you multiple sell signals there which was that high 
another sell signal there which was that high and you know it's a sell signal because it fails there and then another double top here you can see that double top that blip there this area here also corresponds to this RSI highs so lots of information here so the RSI was telling you that the stock was not in favor and that it was failing to hold the previous breakpoint and that is another major red flag now I want to touch on something very simple here and it is the MACD of course there are two MACDs on my charts but I'll, I'll spend time talking about the main MACD okay 12.26.9 notice ever since the stock broke down in 2000 or late 1998 which is this area here this break the stock has basically stayed below zero here it never moved above zero since 1998 here this level here to the bankruptcy early 2012 we're talking about so many years almost 14 years once it moved below zero it was game over for this stock moving below zero there was a red flag and the fact that it stayed below zero it moved back below zero here red flag and there was another major red flag because as you can see here it tried to recapture zero failed try to recapture zero here failed again another red flag so the market kept this instrument trading below zero on the MACD that was another red flag whenever a stock cannot recapture zero it's never a good sign so I'm gonna leave you with that because we've touched on a few things here we've seen how bear flags are notorious for moving stocks lower we've seen how you should always be careful not to own stocks that are breaking down We've seen how a stock can go from trading in the 80s all the way to trading below zero or at zero. So those are the things to watch. Stocks can give you lots of sell signals on their way to trading or before they go bankrupt. Eric Moade, good luck, peace, and blessings. Woo!